What's up, guys? I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, we're going to talk about Ari Aster. I'm really excited. Uh, he's one of my favorite directors working today. A uh, very divisive director, just, just like my ranking videos. I have not learned my lesson. But I don't know what possessed me to want to just sit down and uh, watch all of his short films, but I did. And, uh, and I had seen some before, but some I had not. And we'll talk about that just a little bit. Um, but, but yeah, he's got like a whole filmography of short films. He has eight. And... I'm, I, I wish he would do more because, you know, the great thing about short films, you know, they're very low risk. You can experiment and he definitely does so. Uh, but let's not waste any time. Let's let's go ahead and rank these things. So coming in at last place at number eight, we have uh, TDF Really Works, which stands for Tino's Tino's PP2. Yeah, that's what that means. And it's funny because Ari Aster is uh, actually an actor in this, which is kind of strange. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. This this short didn't do it for me, although it is mainly just sort of an advertisement uh, for TDF, uh, which if this was actually an advertisement, it did not do a good job of making me want to get TDF. Uh, but, you know, it, it was two minutes and yeah, definitely Ari Aster. Coming in at number seven, we have Herman's Cure All Tonic. Uh, Harold works the pharmacy counter for his sickly, abusive father, Herman, the inventor uh, and purveyor of an in-demand health elixir. The meek young man struggles with obsessive requests and severe criticism from his customers until one day he hits upon an idea. Yeah, I this was another one I had a hard time getting into. Um, this is, of course, a more earlier Ari Aster work. Um, so it's not as clean as all the other ones. It actually came out in 2008. And the interesting thing about Ari Aster's short films is some of it bleeds into his feature films, uh, especially like Bo and uh, Cela V, um, which I would I would say Cela V bled in a little bit into Bo is Afraid. Um, so I would be very intrigued if Herman's Cure All Tonic made it into one of his feature films. Uh, but this one, I don't know, it just it didn't do it for me. Um, by the way, all of these are on YouTube, I think, uh, except for Bo. I had to go on archive.org, I think, to find that one. Uh, but yeah. Coming in at number six, um, and this is actually one of his better made shorts, and I would probably say a lot of people uh, enjoyed this more than I did, but Munchausen, uh, which I actually like the way that Munchausen is presented. A mother unable to confront her heart, the heartbreak of her son leaving for college delays his departure. I can't talk. Delays his departure by making him sick. Unfortunately, she goes too far. I have seen this sort of described as a live action messed up Pixar montage, which is very much so a great accurate representation of what this actually is. Um, I liked it better than the last two that I talked about, um, but it, again, it just it wasn't for me. Um, although, although the the premise of this alone could could make for a pretty interesting film, I think if if Ari Aster wanted to expand on it um, and do something, uh, you know, for his next film or or going down. I know he's got another film coming out, but just just going down uh, the road. Uh, but yeah, it, I mean, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't bad. It was just for me, I couldn't personally get into it. Although, like I said, describing it as a messed up live action Pixar montage, that's if that's something that's up your alley, you're going to get that. You, you, you might actually like it. Coming in at number five is Bo, uh, which if you've seen Bo is Afraid, this is sort of a short film version of it. Although there are elements from this that, that bleed over to the actual feature film. And I actually enjoyed Bo is Afraid uh, quite a bit, although I would say the first hour of Bo, uh, Bo is Afraid is, is better than the rest of the movie. Uh, but uh, yeah, it stars Billy Mayo, which unfortunately I believe passed away, um, which would have been really great to see him in some of Ari Aster's work. I'm not exactly sure if he was in Hereditary or Midsummer. I'm not, I'm not for sure. I don't think so. Um, but if you enjoy Bo is Afraid, this is a short film version of that. And dare I say that some people might actually enjoy that because from some of the you know things I've heard about Bo is Afraid from other people, um, it seems like a lot of people just don't really care for that film as much as Ari Aster's other filmography. And I, and I, and I can understand that. Um, but yeah, it, and it's a pretty short watch too at only like seven minutes. Um, and, and again, this is one that I had to dig a little bit to find it. It's on uh, archive.org though. 
Um, I think that's the website. So if you guys want to check it out, or you can just look it up on Reddit and you should be able to find it there. Coming in at number four is the turtle's head. And I am probably mispronouncing this guy's name, Richard Riley. Uh, I think that's how I'm saying it. I'm not exactly sure. Although I have seen him in so many things. I mean, right here, it, it's uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Office Space. I love Office Space. The Fugitive, uh, Halloween 2, Man from Earth, Glory, uh, Texas Chainsaw 2013, Three from Hell, uh, Of Mice and Men, Hatchet, Joe Dirt, uh, Munchausen. He's also in Munchausen. Uh, Pee Wee's Big Holiday, Mighty Joe Young. Gosh, uh, The Turtle's Head. Iron Will. Okay. Badass uh, with Danny Trejo. I actually watched that a long time ago. I, I forgot that even existed. Messengers 2, The Scarecrow, another one that I'd seen so long ago. Yeah, so it, he's, he's in stuff. He's in stuff. But an aging, hilariously uh, slimy detective with a taste for womanizing is distracted from the case of his career when he starts developing a mysterious medical condition. I might just leave it at that because going into it, it's, it's pretty comedic. Uh, and this is another one of those ideas where... If Ari Aster wanted to develop it into an actual feature film, he probably could. Although, I don't know. I don't know how that would go with, with, with people. Plot aside, it's a pretty well-made short. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. There's a specific scene, which it's a very quick scene. Uh, uh, that I, I, Again, I, just, I don't want to spoil anything. I'm not, I'm not going to go into too many details about it. Um, it's, it's only a 12-minute short. But there's one scene in particular that I thought was, was really, really well-made. Um, you know, his filmmaking... Uh, his style of filmmaking is definitely, definitely showing in, in the turtle's head. Uh, very strange, though. Very strange. Coming in at number three, and these next uh, couple are, are interesting just from the way that they're filmed, but it's C'est la vie. C'est la vie in a series of clinical tableau compromising a sort of apocalyptic travelogue of the L.A. streets, an aggressive homeless man berates the viewer regarding the circumstances of his life and the wrongness of everything. This is very much structured like almost a commercial of sorts, which, you know, tableau, like, like it's, it's basically moving paintings in a sense with the character sort of talking uh, talking you through a lot of dialogue and he's presenting a story which it actually, the, the dialogue is very front and center and it helps sort of form a narrative in your head and that's what I find very impressive, and I wonder if Ari Aster would ever be willing to include some of this in a future feature. Uh, but I liked it. I liked it more so than I thought I would. I could tell about three minutes, probably sooner than that, what it was going for, and it worked. It really did work. There's some some beautiful imagery in it uh, for something that's so short at eight minutes. Um, I liked it, and I couldn't help but think a little bit of Bo is Afraid. Coming in at number two is basically a bright but acid tongued young actress walks the viewer through the drudgeries of her privileged life in a series of clinical uh, tableau. So yeah, it's sort of the same thing, except this one is longer. It's 15 minutes, and I, I don't know. It's just the, again, it's it's carrying you with the dialogue. Um, it's putting stuff in your head, and you're having to imagine things. But it does such a good job of it, and and I just I, I I enjoyed it so much. I really did. I'm not sure if it's for everyone, but it, it worked for me. I, I did enjoy it. Um, and the lead actress in this, um, she did a phenomenal job. She she did a great job to the point to where I kind of want to watch this again. Just just thinking of it. But but yeah, that's number two. And coming in at number one, this is no surprise. This is the one. This is the one short that a lot of people uh, know Ari Aster for. A dark domestic melodrama satire about the ties that bind and the ties that really bind. Um, yeah, for those of you guys that have seen this, you know what that means. And I'm not going to say anything more about this. This is one of those shorts where you want to go in blind. Because when I first watched this, this is probably one of the few things that I wish I could go in blind again. Because just thinking about it like when i realized what was going on i mean i was just sitting there in awe like it was just oh my gosh like just <laughs> wow wow and and this is another one where i i think that there's enough material here to make a feature film although i don't know if you would want to because this is very controversial this is a very controversial short film um rightfully so uh but i i love it so much i have it at, which i don't do ratings on letterbox too often um, i do it with short films just to kind of be funny uh, but i ended up giving this one a four and a half and i could probably go up to five um 
if I if I wanted to, I could probably go up to five. Um, but yeah, the strange thing about the Johnstons, this is the one that most people know about. <laughs> Watch at your own risk. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I just wanted to do a quick little ranking of Ari Aster's shorts. It gave me an excuse to talk about Ari Aster a little bit. And when I was watching the short films, I kind of felt like I was going on a little bit of a journey. Uh, I, I enjoy going through filmographies from directors. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it's not too often that you have a, a director with a, a big catalog of short films. I know David Lynch does as well, uh, but I have not seen all of David Lynch's short films, so I would probably feel uncomfortable doing um, a, a filmography ranking of his short films. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. Um, let me know what your favorite uh, Ari Aster short film is down in the comments below. Also, my video ended up cutting out, but also if you guys want to check out my trailer for Pesadilla, links down in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time.